Hey guys, hope you're doing well. And now we're going to start a brand new topic of a different kind of market structure. So we've talked about perfect competition a lot, uh, and hopefully you're comfortable with that. That's at one extreme end, the, you know, the implication and the conclusions we had there. Now we're going to look at the other extreme case, uh, and then you know, that's going to be monopoly. And then the, in a the couple of uh, cases in between, which are monopolistic competition and oligopoly, we'll talk about after we're done with monopoly. So here, you know, I talked about the baker's example. When we think of monopolies, think of utility companies, right? So if you're living in a city, in, you know, in, in, on most cases, we don't have five or six different providers of electricity. We don't have five or six different providers of tap water. Those are examples of a market which is not perfect competition. So you know, this is an example of electricity. In most cities, we have one organization, whether it's government run or privately run, that provides electricity to most houses. So now we're going to analyze this kind of market in a lot more detail and how the outcomes are different than when we talked about it in perfect competition. So to start the topic, we look at the differences. You know, what does it mean to be in a monopoly and how is it different from competitive markets? So one thing to keep in mind is that you, know, you might think that you know, what, do firms compete a lot more in perfect competition or monopoly or any other kind of market structure? When we think of perfect competition, you know that the producers are such a small part of such a big market, they cannot have any influence on the market price, so they don't care as much about what other producers are doing. But when we talk about monopoly, oligopoly, monopolistic competition, you'll see that one producer you know, cares a lot more about what other producers are doing because they all have market power, they all have market share. So you know, keep those concepts in mind uh, as we you know, developed uh, the three other kinds of market structures. So the assumption on a perfect competition, which should not be new, there are many, many buyers, there are sellers that are producing identical good. That was you know, a, a little restrictive uh, assumption, but nevertheless, that's what perfect competition means. Firms can enter and exit without any problem, or there are no barriers to entry. And you'll see this, this is what causes monopolies to continue to exist, is that there are barriers to entry for other firms to enter the market. Now, when we talk about imperfect competition, and all three of the other cases come under imperfect competition, we have that some of, this, some of these assumptions are not met. Right? So if you relax assumptions one and three, which means you don't have many, many sellers, you have one or a few, and they do not have free entry or exit, there are something preventing firms from entering and exited, exiting, then we have monopoly and oligopoly. And if we relax assumption two, which says that the producers are producing identical goods, then we have monopolistic competition. So you'll see that all three of these is some combination of some of these assumptions that are relaxed. All right? So you'll also see that each of these markets have, are, have some degree of market power, which means they're going to be price makers. And we'll describe that in a lot more detail later on. You should remember that in perfect uh, competition, producers were price takers. They had no influence on the market price. They took the market price to be given, and then they chose how much to produce and calculate their profits based on that price. Right, so monopoly now is the extreme, other extreme case where you only have one seller. You still have many, many buyers, but you only have one seller. Uh, that means there aren't, uh, you know, th there's no competition. There aren't any close substitutes for that good either. That makes that producer uh, you know, having a great deal of authority in, in their decision making and what they produce and how, what price they charge. And we'll see uh, you know, in a little bit that they are going to be price makers, which means they can choose what price to charge. That doesn't mean they'll charge as much as they want, because we still know the demand curve in the market is downward sloping. But they have some degree of being able to uh, choose what price to charge. And they're going to have substantial barriers to entry. So that's what causes monopolies to continue to exist, is there something preventing other firms from entering the market. All right, so then we'll do an example later on as well. And like I said, we're still going to assume that the demand side is still perfectly competitive. There are still many, many buyers. And then the inputs that the monopolist buys is still operating in a perfectly competitive market or in a competitive market. And lastly, we're still going to assume that the demand side is co competitive, so there are many, many buyers. And also, the inputs that the monopolist has to buy is produced in a competitive market. Right? So those are still uh, in a competitive market. So like I said, the barriers to entry exist, something preventing other firms from entering the market. Sometimes it's government-created monopolies. Uh, sometimes it's the, the fact that a monopolist owns some key resource that they need to produce the output. There are several reasons, which we're not going to get into too much detail into. But all you need to know is that that what prevents other firms from entering the market and letting monopolies exist. All right, so that's the uh, reason why monopolies continue to exist. And you'll see when we get to the end of it, every producer would like to act like a monopolist, but Every consumer would like the market to be perfectly competitive, and we see that barriers to entry, if you don't have barriers to entry, then it's very hard for a monopolist to exist, because it's going to become more and more competitive. 
All right, so monopoly is going to be the sole producer. It's going to face the downward sloping part of the demand side. So this is what's going to be a key difference between perfect competition and monopoly is that in perfect competition, I was selling to such a small part of a very large market because I'm such a small producer that I could not change the market outcome. So I could produce as much as I want or as little as I want without having any consequence on the market price. So I was a price taker. I was only worried about the uh, demand side uh, you know, for the firm to be horizontal. I could produce as much or as little without changing the market price. But a monopolist, since I'm the only producer, if I'm a monopoly, I'm going to be operating on the market demand curve, which is, looks like a regular demand curve, which is downward sloping. Because I'm supplying to everyone, not just a small part of a very, very big market. So understand the key difference here. right? So the market demand curve is still the same in both cases, but the firm is what we're talking about. We're comparing one producer here to one producer here. Right? And I'll talk a little bit more about that in the next slide. So in a competitive firm, the demand curve for a particular firm is horizontal. They take the price to be given to them by the market, and they choose whatever quantity they want to choose based on their costs, like we've talked about in the uh, videos in the past. Monopolists, since they are the only producer, are going to be working off of the demand curve, which means that there's going to be a negative relationship between price and quantity. Right? So one question, let me ask you and pause and think about it. Are these graphs referring to a firm or the market? So pause and think and get back. When I look at this, it's for the firm. Because in a competitive market, there's a market, and then there's one firm, because there are one of thousands of firms. So this is the outcome for a firm, and then they drew the demand and supply for the market. So they were different. In a monopoly, since I'm the only producer, I am the market as well. So when I talk about monopolists, I'm looking at the firm and the market as one graph because there's only one producer. But when I'm talking about perfect competition, they are separate because I'm one of thousand producers, so the market is one graph, and the firm's outcome is my graph, which is different. So make sure you keep the two different. Now, one thing to point out here is that you know, uh, in perfect competition, the producer charged what the market was given, price was given to them, and they could produce whatever quantity based on their profit maximizing outcome. A monopolist, if they want to charge a higher price, they will sell fewer units, and conversely, if they want to sell more units, they'll have to lower their price because they don't face uh, the fact that they are one of many, many producers in a market, which means they have no market power. So keep that in mind as we proceed with this chapter uh, over the next several videos. So this property of uh, a competitive market makes the firm a per price taker, and this property makes a firm a price maker, because they can choose the price. It'll change how much they'll sell and produce, but at least they have some degree of what price they can choose. They have some market power to, to do so. All right, so in this video, we've talked about the differences uh, between a perfectly competitive market, which we've talked about a lot, and a monopolist, which is a new kind of market that we're talking about. So make sure you understand this, the differences between the two, because as I continue with this chapter, I'm going to be referring to how the outcome in a monopoly is different than perfect competition. So you need to be very clear on what perfect competition is, and then we'll proceed on how a monopolist makes, a makes their decision in the next video.